Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror comedy film. The ghost must be crazy. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts in a forest where two soldiers are dispatched. While digging, they begin talking about rumors that the place is haunted. They continue to dig until one of them sees something under the ground. They argue whether it's a tree root or hair, but discover it's a Barbie doll. Suddenly, a long-haired ghost appears behind them. As they pull the doll, the ghost moves, revealing it to be the voodoo doll. They suddenly smell something, so they look behind but don't notice the ghost. The soldier says it must have been the satay and the sauce they're smelling. They soon realize that someone is behind them, prompting them to run their smelly asses away as fast as possible. The ghost terrifies them as they look behind. This is a story of two buddies, reservist Nan and Lei, who are telling this to their captain, so that he would allow them not to join the in-camp training. They continue to convince their captain that their training camp is haunted. Nan says that God has requested him to exempt him from his duties, but the captain tells him to make his God talk to him directly, but he wants to be exempted. Lei is also asking for an exemption, because his grandmother has passed away. The captain takes the record book in his cabinet, and shows him that he already said his grandmother passed away last year, with a signature on it. The captain tells both of them to get out before they fail their in-camp this year. Shortly after, another soldier, Tan, also talks to the captain, saying that he is not asking for a day off. He just wants an excuse from the field training, because he is sick and has internal injuries. The captain tells him to go to the medical office, but the soldier refuses because it's his last in-camp training. He coughs blood, but the captain still doesn't believe it, saying it is just a prop. Because the captain doesn't allow him to have an exemption, he asks for light duty. But the captain says that the defense exercise is very tough, and he knows if someone is lying. After that, Tan comes across Nan and Lei. They say that he should stop acting already because he's outside the office and blames him that it's his fault that the captain did not approve their leave. Moments after, Nan and Lei bump into another captain, in sick, who scolds Lei because his hair is color. He is given two choices, color his hair black or be bald like in sick. While he dyes his hair using shoe polish, other soldiers poke fun at him. Then they tell Nan and Lei that in sick died in a terrible car crash. They don't believe their bullshit, but they respond that it is a serious case, and add that they must pray for protection. It is the night of their last defense exercise, and they're off to be after. While the exercise details are being read, Lei sees in sick on the side from afar, and he's getting closer and closer to them. It frightens them when in sick gets in front of them, and blood comes out of his mouth. He spits it out, and asks them who said that he is dead, because he is still alive. The other soldiers laugh at them, because they believe it. The captain gets mad at them for joking around, and says they will die if they get late for training. Morning comes, and they reach the training area. Nan and Lei cook their meal, while Tan daves for shell scrape. And Sick comes and scolds them again, because they should also dig their shell scrape. Nan says that the three of them would be sharing that shell scrape, and demonstrates to In Sick how they will do it. In Sick questions them about how they pass their military training, because all they do is fool around. In Sick smells something, but not from Nan's noodles. So Tan informs them that it's his Chinese medicine. In Sick scolds him because he can't cook Chinese medicine in the field, and because it might catch the attention of the enemy aircraft, which can possibly harm them. He repeats the same example again and again until they understand it. Then In Sick takes their food and cooking materials, saying that they should now make their fire trench properly. The night comes, and they blame Tan for why their food is taken. Tan then says he's really sick and needs to defecate. Later that night, Nan and Lei pretend to be digging with Tan when In Sick comes. However, in sick questions how they can dig the trench. They suddenly shouts that there's hair at the bottom. Nan says that his god is telling him that someone died there. They ask in sick to tell the captain to cancel the training, but in sick responds that he has been a soldier for 35 years. If they happen to see the ghost again, tell it to report to him, and he will throw it into the guard room. While walking back to the camp, in sick hears something that frightens him, prompting him to pray in panic and fear to be saved. The noodles he's eating suddenly have hair, and when he turns around, the ghosts behind him. In sick shouts while running away from the ghost, but wherever he goes, it's there. The two ghosts are actually Nan and Lei laughing at him, because he's also afraid of ghosts. In sick reports it to the captain, but the captain tells him to stop his nonsense. He says the same thing to In sick, that he will throw the ghost into the guard room. Nan and Lei return to their camp, while Tan is very ill from digging the trench on his own. Then In sick and the captain go to them, and ask them if they have also seen the ghost. They agree and say that the captain should cancel the training, because the place is haunted, but the captain refuses. While talking about the ghost, Tan collapses, and the captain tells In Sik to call the medic, but the medics also report being sick. In Sik says that he will send him to the medical center safely. The captain talks to Nan and Lei, and asks them again if they have seen a long-haired ghost. They say it is terrifying. 
The captain tells them to get rid of the ghost. And Sick talks to Tan while driving him to the medical center, so he will not lose consciousness. But he suddenly sees a ghost on the road, prompting him to steer the wheel aggressively. The car falls into a cliff, but they're still alive with injuries. And Sick checks on him. But he runs away from fear, upon discovering that Tan has no pulse. The scene comes back to Nan and Lei, who think of a plan to frighten the captain, as they did to Insik to terminate the exercise. They hear something, and look around where the sound is coming from. They see a soldier, and Lei tells a secret code, and finds out that the soldier is one of them. They ask who it is, and walk closer. It is Tan, with blood and glasses on his face. They think that he's pretending to be dead with makeup, so they threaten to beat him up, unless he scares the captain and makes him terminate the exercise. On the other hand, Insik informs the captain that Tan died in a car crash, while they were going to the medical center. The captain repeatedly asks Insik if he's sure about Tan's death, and Insik confirms that he is. However, the captain points out to his back, and as Insik turns around, he finds Tan standing behind him. Insik quickly hides behind the captain, and repeatedly claims he is a ghost. The captain gets upset at Insik, thinking that he's fooling around. He orders Insik to check their men, and while this is happening, Nan and Lei are behind the bush watching the whole thing. They laugh, thinking that Tan is good at acting dead, and those who don't know may think he's really a ghost. As the captain asks Tan if he's still waiting for an exemption from the training, Insik joins Nan and Lei behind the bush. Insik tells the two that Tan is really dead. While Tan remains silent, the captain tells him to come up with another plan to be exempted, because he doesn't believe his act. But when he looks back, Tan is on the other side, shocking him. However, he remains calm and still doesn't believe him. And when he looks again at Tan, he is now behind him, and his face is blood and glasses. The captain finally believes he's a ghost when his eyes roll, and his hair gets longer, covering his face. He chases the captain. A trio drives away from the camp after witnessing this, and the two blame Insik, because he's the reason for the car crash. They suddenly stop as they find Insik's car, where they see Tan's body together with another one, Insik. As the two look back, they find Insik crying, as he looks at his own body. It turns out, he died with Tan in a car accident. Insik suddenly slaps his head, causing it to fall off, and prompting the duo to cover their eyes in fear. Insik is back in the car when they open their eyes, so they try to get out of the vehicle through the back. But Tan says that the captain approves his leave, and outside is the long-haired ghost, and the two can only scream in fear as she pulls the car back to the training camp. The following story starts with a man and woman kissing when another man on a motorcycle shouts at their smelly hormones. This man is poor in cash, named Mr. Broke. The woman is his ex-girlfriend, and Mr. Broke's mad and jealous that she has already found a richer guy. The woman wants to drive away to continue their greasy makeout session. However, Mr. Broke stops her and demands her to marry him. But she responds that only a ghost would marry him. Mr. Broke sits on the roadside, his sadness visible in his aura. A man with long hair named Hai witnessed the whole thing, and he advised Mr. Broke to move on from the fat girl. Mr. Broke tells him that he has 20 girlfriends from the past that do the same. He even lowered his standard for his fat ex-girlfriend, but she still dumped him. Hai says that if he is rich, women will come to him. But the problem is Mr. Broke doesn't have any money, except for his hormones. Hai tells him that he has a way to make him rich without breaking the law, and asks if he dares to try. Mr. Broke responds that he will try anything if he can win the lottery. The next day, they go to a place with the best omen in Singapore. It's said that the descendants of those whose urns are in that place will enjoy good fortune and luck. Hai brings him there, so he can borrow some good fortune and luck from the deceased. Hai reassures Mr. Broke that all the people he brought there got rich, but he needs to follow the rules that if they grant what he asks for, he needs to give them back what he promises. He starts talking to the deceased, and asks for their blessing, so he can win the lottery. And he promises that if it happens, he will return to thank all of them, by burning many paper ingots for them. On their way out, Mr. Broke asks Hai if it is really true. He shares that the last person he brought there, won second place in the lottery, and first place the next day. Hai says he will be a ghost if he lies. Then they see a red packet on the floor. Hai warns him not to pick it up, but it's already too late. Mr. Broke picks up the packet and opens it, claiming its fate. Inside the red packet, there are two number combinations, and Mr. Broke decides that he will bet him on the lottery. The next day, Mr. Broke gets yelled at by his boss, and he even compares him to a pig. Then Hai appears and helps him carry the dishes to the wash area. While Mr. Broke cleans the dishes and talks to Hai, he hears the radio announcing the lottery results. His second number wins the jackpot, and he places high stakes. Mr. Broke's so happy that he plays with the water, and when his boss sees him, he scolds Mr. Broke again. However, since he just won the lottery, Mr. Broke sprays the water on his boss, calls him a pig, and quits his job. Mr. Broke pays his debts and spends his money pampering himself and the women around him. After this, he kidnaps his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend. 
He orders the other men in the room to open the cage and put his super fat ex-girlfriend inside. The cage is full of snakes, and Mr. Broke laughs maniacally as he dares the new boyfriend, who has a stutter, to count to three so the woman can come out. After that, Mr. Broke continues spending his money on gambling, and his luck continues. However, his luck runs out after an hour, and he soon begins losing until he's left with nothing. He can't see where high is after he loses, so he goes. However, an urn on top of his car stops him from entering the vehicle. He looks around and finds himself surrounded by urns, one of which explodes in his face. The next day, while he's shaking, Hai asks him if he has given the paper ingots he promises if he wins the lottery. Mr. Broke forgot it, because he was so happy about winning. Hai informs him that they will come after him, since he failed to fulfill the promise. Hai tells him that he can still fix it, if Mr. Broke gives him money, but all that is left in him are a few dollars. Then Hai asks him if he remembers the red packet from the columbarium. It belongs to a girl named Zayo, who died in her twenties and is still single. Her urn is inside the columbarium, and she is the one who loans her luck for Mr. Broke to win the two lotteries. Zayo wants him to marry her, as a reimbursement for his deed. Hai says that if he marries her, he will strike rich and will have good fortune. And of course, Mr. Broke agrees, so they go to Zayo's family house. They are inside a Paranakan house, and when Mr. Broke asks if there's no one home, the mother and father are suddenly sitting in front of them. Her mother tells the story of Zayo, on how she died at the age of 22 before finding her partner. Mr. Broke makes fun of Zayo's mischief, and when he looks back, Zayo's sisters stand behind their parents. He comments that they are good-looking, and tells Hai that he will choose from both of them, since Zayo is already dead. He looks back, and beside the sisters are their husbands. Mr. Broke asks them where Zayo is, and her photographs, surprising the family. Finally, they claim that Zayo is actually Hai. Mr. Broke thinks they're joking, but when Hai suddenly vanishes beside him, and comes out of the room as Zayo, he's shocked in his hormones. The father asks Mr. Broke when they can meet his family to discuss the marriage, but he is still shocked, and asks him again if he is really marrying Hai, a muscular man. Her mother responds that he is not Hai, she is Zayo. He refuses and claims that he's not a homosexual. Zayo proves her sexuality, by showing that she has a woman's body. Mr. Broke still refuses, but the father tells him that their fate is bound by marriage. Zayo tells him that she knows that he doesn't like her look, but she never forces him to do anything. She tells the story of the red packet, and how glad she is, when Mr. Broke tells him that it is fate that he found that. They begin to argue because Zayo is madly in love with him, that she let Mr. Broke borrow her luck, so that he could win the lottery. Zayo claims she's more than good enough for his standards, since the girls he dates are getting uglier. But he insults Zayo, saying that she is the ugliest ghost, prompting her father to transport Mr. Broke to a dark room with ghosts. The ghosts tell him they were also humans before. Zayo then appears, wearing a bridal gown, saying that even Mr. Broke doesn't want her. Zayo gets closer, and when she turns around, her face is covered with blood. Mr. Broke covers his eyes in fear, and when he opens his eyes, Zayo is in a burning cage, saying that if he doesn't marry her, it is the same as banishing her to hell. Zayo says that she will stay there forever if he doesn't help her, and her hair keeps on getting longer and longer. Mr. Broke has no choice but to open the cage himself, because he cannot stand seeing Zayo suffering. Hell quickly becomes heaven as he unlocks the cage and agrees to marry Zayo. Mr. Broke informs his mother about his marriage, and she laughs, saying that only ghosts will marry him. Mr. Broke agrees with his mother's words, and Zayo suddenly appears in the room with her family, asking for his mother's blessing. Mr. Broke wonders if he marries a ghost, she will not have grandchildren. But the mother answers that if Mr. Broke finds a suitable partner, he can marry again, but Zayo has to be his first wife in status. They assure them that fortune and luck will be with them. They can bet on any numbers, and it will win, then they vanish into thin air. Mr. Broke goes to a paper store and buys things for their marriage. Zayo picks everything she wants, and Mr. Broke buys it for her. She buys bungalows, beds, pads, diamonds made of human ashes, and cars. Then they get married, celebrate their marriage, and burn the paper ingots. Zayo transforms into anyone he wants during their honeymoon, because Mr. Broke cannot look at her. The next day, Mr. Broke gets hit by a car while walking on the road. He stands up, claiming he's unlucky, when the onlookers gather at his back. Mr. Broke turns around and finds his human body lying lifeless. Mr. Broke realizes that he's now a ghost. When he approaches the car that hit him, he finds Zayo in the driver's seat. The film ends with Zayo telling Mr. Broke that he's too naive to believe what a ghost says. After that, she invites him to go with her to the paper warehouse, and not worry about his body since he's already dead. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.